welcome back to Rice Chat. Garrett has been replaced by Dan. Yeah, and, also Peter. Up. and I'm still Oscar. We're going to be talking about 2016 again. Kind of uh, franchises we'd like to see come back. Crowdfunding, remakes, that kind of thing. We already spoke a little bit about Twilight Princess HD in yeah. the previous video. What do you want to see? Any, any thoughts, Peter? Ah. Uh. Do I want to see this year that's not already coming or we didn't already have? Um, I would have liked to see a new Prince of Persia. Actually. Oh my god, why didn't a I think of that? A proper Prince of Persia game. We've not had one in a while. The last one wasn't very good. It was, uh, was alright. Forgotten Sands? Yes. Yeah, um, I kind um, of like it a lot, but it's like, also I, a buggy, it, horrible mess. Yes, <laughs> and it doesn't even really register in my mind. Because like you used to work at Ubisoft, yes. didn't you? So, uh, which, which Prince of Persia's were you around for? Uh, Forgotten Sands. Just Forgotten Sands? Yes. Um, so, but the last Prince of Persia that's kind of valid in my mind is the 2008 one. Which uh, is a game I, I loved really, it. really enjoyed. Yeah, I loved it so much, and no one did, and I don't know why. <laughs> they were like, oh, you can't even die properly. It was like, well, I don't, it's still yeah, kind it's, of got to start again. So. Yeah. It, it was really, really good, and then uh, it's it's not. They've not really done anything. I with think it. I got like, I'm a, I think I did like all the gamer score or something on it. Like the stupid stuff where you gotta like complete it in a really short amount of time. Yeah, I really, I really like Prince Persia. Uh, I like the the idea behind the character. Um, I like the gameplay that they established. Uh, um, the sounds of time. Um, Forgotten Sands wasn't that bad in the way it did some of that stuff mm -hmm. with them. Um, it, when it had you doing like the water freezing time yeah. and you would like be like jumping and you go like through a waterfall and then you would do the times so you could wall jump up and then you'd have to untime and then do and then yeah, spin on the Yeah, it had awesome platforming puzzles, it had a really good combat system and it was just an entertaining game and I want more of those things. I didn't like the combat system if we got any sense. Really? Mm, it was like yeah. playing bowling. I suppose. <laughs> There's a combat system in the 08 one. Lovely. Yeah. Kind of. So yeah, I, it's a bit I, weird, but it was. I, I enjoyed the the, uh, the trilogy. You ever played uh, Prince of Persia yet? No. I never played never, Not a single one. No. Not even the original oh. Prince of Persia. Oh, no, whatever it was. Yeah. I played Soul Reaver, and that's the, for some reason I keep thinking of that. But I mm. never played. I might have played like a demo, but I never actually played. Soul Reaver really. was pretty popular. Actually, that is also a franchise that I would have liked to see come back. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Because I played the Legacy of Kane games. Mm. And yeah, those are really popular. Marketed LDS. Yeah, and I played uh, I played Soul Reaver, and I like both of them. <coughs> uh, I like Kane more than uh, Raziel. Is it the kind of third person adventure, like action adventure? Yes. Is less of a thing now. It, it, they, they don't really do. Is that Uncharted? See, there's yeah. Rise of the Tomb Raider. Both great. But and very not, well received, so why isn't that more? They're not really the same... Well, in a way, I guess Tomb Raider might be. I think our Uncharted is like a little bit too restrictive in the way that it guides the player to, yeah. to really give you th that same experience. Just like a big-ass level where you're running around and you're jumping on things and you're trying to get to places and you fight some enemies and, and so on and so forth. Uh, you don't see those things much anymore. That's a shame. And I really like them. I was so. going to say like medieval or something. Yeah, that was good too. So you, you don't. It was really like a PSP it. one. I yeah. Think, but besides that. Really but yes, I want a third-person action platforming game. That's what I want. Someone's got to make one, even if even if it's like an indie game. Yeah. An indie game's getting to the level where that's easier to do now than uh, just. Kind of retro style <laughs> puzzle I, platform. I, I think uh, yes, with with uh, with Unity and and Unreal Engine Four, that is a thing that you can do fairly easily. But actually making it well, making it a really good because it's, uh, it's some of these easy. independent things are picking up the pieces. I mean, there's the Kickstarter ones that have been super successful. The uh, Bloodstained is the one I'm thinking of the most, which is basically Castlevania. Yeah, because no, for some reason, none of the big publishers want to take a risk on putting out games in that kind of genre. Mm -hmm. Psychonauts too, as well. That just got funded. Yeah, but they get funded, so I don't really see what the issue is. 
Well, it's not. I, I don't think in, it's necessarily that no publishers want to take a risk on it. It's more that the developers want to be able to do those games without being tied to all the strings that comes with publisher funding. I guess so. Such as, oh, you gotta make it by this time, or you gotta hit this milestone, if not, we're not gonna give you any more money, and so on, and you have executives butting in into what you're gonna do, and so on. Whereas with, um, when you have a crowdfunded project, to a certain extent, you have full creative control over what you're doing. Whereas you lose a lot of that control when you're being uh, funded by a publisher. So uh, I think that's what really draws established big name developers to crowdfunding. Just the, the added freedom. Yeah. And who knows what Kojima is going to do next. Mm. <sighs> Square Enix are doing Final Fantasy VII Remake then. Yes. They are. I'm looking forward to that. I don't even know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> One of the biggest Final Fantasy in. fans in the office. Oh, when he came in, he was like, What game would you want to see remade? I was just like, Well, it's being done. <laughs> Can I talk about it? He was like, yeah. But yeah. Well, it is being done. It and, is. Uh, how do you feel about the idea that it's going to be um, an episodic game instead of like one big game? It's going to be many different parts. Um, at first, it was like, I didn't really know what it meant that, and, I was, and then they didn't like really telling me. explain it. Yeah, and then we still don't really know what it's going to be. Do we? No, I don't know. I thought it depends. Really, does that mean there's no world map? Does that mean that it's just you're going to end up in the next episode in the next place? But then I started thinking about it. Like to be honest with you, I think loads of people wanted to see it remade anyway. You've always got the original. Now you've got the original on like PSP, um, PS Vita, and things like that. The PS4 version is really good. Yeah, the PS4, PS Vita. It's like you've always got that. So this is just kind of like an added thing, really. It's kind of like a bonus. In a way, it's almost better than they're changing it more than they. Yeah, get away. I mean, I have read people being upset that they're changing the combat system, they're changing yeah. all these things. But if you just want the original, just play the original. <laughs> Um, it, it holds that surprisingly that's well. That's why I started Fantasy yeah. But I mean, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want them to take things out of it. I want them to add things. Yeah. And take things out. But. And that is what they've been saying in the interviews. That part of the reason why they're doing it in an episodic way is that there's already that much content in the game that making it as one game is going to be a massive undertaking. Yeah. Uh, whereas uh, now they can kind of focus on parts of the game, areas of the game, and then put more detail into it and make the world more of a living place, I suppose. Yeah. And hopefully that will actually result in, in uh, you know, a more dense, content-dense game in within each episode. Because, I mean, the map would just have to be huge, wouldn't it? You need to, like, yeah. get everything up to today's standard and then also... So when they say that, like what I what I imagine is that if they um, like one way they could do it is is kind of like what happened in Crisis Core, where you have you know a recreation of Midgard, but it's quite empty. Yeah, I didn't you're, play Crisis Core. You're just running around in empty streets, and there's mm -hmm. like there's like maybe one person there and then one person there, and just you're running down the street, and there's nothing going on. But whereas when they've had time to just focus on Midgard and only Midgard. Maybe you know you get like a bustling street with people Yakuza walking around. Yakuza style. Yeah. <laughs> only it's running up to you as a random combat. Yes. And, and hey, that, that's my hope for you. it anyway. That that's what I want to see from it. Yeah. I think for me, I always like the fact that you could go out and do the world map thing and side quests and things like that. And I quite like the idea that you could get in a ship and fly to another part of the world. Yeah, I'm kind of a side and quest whore. Uh, yeah, and I don't know like if they'll include. But maybe that I do need thing. someone to stop me from doing side quests. Yeah. Because if they did include that, you kind of would have to stick to the little sort of like thumbnail times with the like yeah. little things, and then you go, and then they open up. So it would have to be like a kind of like, you know, flying around the spaceship would have to be different to the actual. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. So I don't know if they're going to do that, which is a shame. But I quite liked it when they did it in, in Lost Odyssey, because mm. that's kind of like old school. But then the loading screens were just ridiculous. Yeah, it's kind of about finding the compromise point, I suppose. Yeah, I think so. But it might it might end up being really cool with the episodic thing. But I just don't have any idea how 
Yeah. They're going to do it, so at the moment you can't. I was disappointed to hear that uh, the kind of sleeping dog semi sequel was cancelled. Trying was. Yeah, that's a shame. But it was like, I wasn't sure how I felt about it at the time though, because it was like a weird kind of online type thing. Why Not like a proper sequel. Why was it cancelled? I don't know, really. It's oh, a yeah. Square Enix thing. All I know is I really, really enjoyed Sleeping Dogs. It was one of my favourite games of that year. Why hasn't there been a proper sequel to it yet? It was really, really good. That's what I want to see come back. Sleeping Dogs 2. Do like a proper Sleeping Dogs 2. And also, I think... Would it still be set in Hong Kong? Uh, oh, I don't know. I mean, I like Hong Kong, but maybe they could do it. Maybe that's how they would do a sequel, is they would maybe do a different place. Mm. End up Assassin's Creed style, where it just end up in different cities every yeah. time. It's still the main character, though. Yeah. <laughs> just him traveling around solving Hong crimes. <laughs> That would be cool. Um, so you you beat up the triads. And gonna beat another up one the I saw was cancelled. Was uh, was it uh, Horror of the Orient or something? Whatever the L.A. Noir next one was. Uh, Horror of the Orient. I think that's what it's called. Horror of the Orient. Yeah, that's a bit weird yeah. name, isn't it? Yeah. I, like, I kind of wish it was just called L.A. Noir Two. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> but I don't think it was going to be an L.A. Noir Two. It would be Noir. like the same style as L.A. Noir. Yeah. Because I'm a big L.A. Noir advocate. Mm. You know, like I it. played it. I didn't... I've played it twice. It was interesting. <laughs> like, it is It is basically... It's basically an adventure game. Attorney. <laughs> like, it is, it is an adventure game hidden within the guise of an open world game, I suppose, in a way. And that's why I love it. So, um, it was alright. It was alright. That, that's, that's as far as I would go. Um, I was really hyped for it, when it, when it before it came out. Oh, like I was so mega hyped. Um... Yeah, I don't really do the whole like getting excited for pre-orders kind of thing that much, mm. but I did pre-order that uh, the Xbox 360 one, which comes on comes with three discs. Yeah, yeah. The PS3 yeah. one doesn't. Mm. Uh, but it came with like uh, it's got like a little um, like a wallet in it with little crime scene photo things, and then you would use that to find where the collectible was in the game, or it would just tell you on Rockstar Social Club. Oh, Red Dead Redemption. They should bring that back. I never got into that. You didn't get into it? No. I mean, I, had a, I got it. played it a few times. See, I'm not sure if I would version. want to see a new Red Dead Redemption, but I would want to see Rockstar do that kind of style of game with a different setting. Yeah, I appreciate GTA, but I mean, I like nice to see playing around fans. with it, but I can never really get into it like I can some other Like, games. imagine... Uh, like a GTA type game, only you're in feudal Japan, for example. Would that uh, not be fun? Would I guess that so. not be a good time? Like, uh, Red Dead Japan. <laughs> I can't think of a good name for it. Red Dead Japan, okay. <laughs> what, if, what if they were to do. Working like, title. Working title. What would you say if they were to do some sort of like fantasy? Like no. Rockstar fantasy <laughs> game? I wouldn't buy that at all. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it, they can do other stuff, and it's nice to see when they do other stuff. Because uh, Red Dead Redemption was fantastic. I suppose they've got some nice little glitches in it that you can find in the stuff, so like... Weird. How about a GTA-type yeah, game where you actually play as Robin Hood? Robin Hood. No, 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 no. I do like bows. <laughs> <laughs> I like bows in games. Bows are cool. That's why Tomb Raider is so good. See, I would play that. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Make it happen. Well, thanks for listening to our <laughs> ideas. Let us know what you'd like to see come back. I'm sure there's tons we didn't think of. Yeah. Robin Hood. Yeah, like I said, I can't really think past uh, Street Fighter Five. So <laughs> I'm sure there are things that I would like to see, but... Medieval. It's hard, man. Thanks for watching. Bye.